Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips and today we're going to be having a look at this Midland 150M AM CB radio or an anti Mary or whatever you wish to call it but first don't forget to like subscribe share comment all that lot well, let's get started so I got this radio from Mr. Vintage Electronics Repair, along with the the other radio, the Stalker 9, which you may have or may not have already seen. But I couldn't resist it. It was in such good condition. And if it wasn't working, it would make a nice repair. And you can see, manufacture date 1979. And it's in really, really good condition. Everything seems to be as it should be with it. A close up of the plate on the back. So yeah. So on this one we get an instruction manual. It is actually labelled eight it's got the um, eighty channel sticker on it, but I think maybe they give that out on the later ones because there is a supplement inside the the manual with the schematic diagram for the 80 channel um, version of this radio but actually in the original part it's the 40 channel schematic so it's very nice we've got a board layout component view and the schematic and that's the schematic for the 40 channel and yeah a nice book and there's a supplement and that is now the 80 channel with the AM and FM so very nice might just do some high res scans of that and put them in my Facebook group somewhere so let's have a look see what it does or what it doesn't do so on initial switch on no sound absolutely nothing And it looks like it's transmitting. So we've got the tiny SA out. Let's have a look. And yeah. It looks like it's transmitting. It looks like it's on frequency. So it looks like we have a receiver fault. So we've got the tiny SA on signal generation. Got an AM carrier. And nothing. Well, the squelch is popping, so something's working. But there's just no sound at all. Well, no received audio, should we say. And the signal meter's not moving. So I think we're going to have to start digging around in the schematic for this one. So I'm just going to have a visual inspection of the board, see whether it's been mutilated sometime in its life. And no, it doesn't look like it. Everything looks like it should be. Somebody was really insistent on putting a serial number on everything for some strange reason. But, hey ho, I'll never find out. But everything looks intact inside. Everything looks nice. So I'm just having a push around the board see whether it's a dry joint and no can't seem to get anything out of it at all but the squelch is popping so something is working so that leads me to believe that the audio um, amplifier is actually operational but with there being no signal on the meter it's highly unlikely it's going to be that. So, I've got my other generator on. And there's nothing on that either. So I'm just having to push around, see whether I can get any life out of anything. And absolutely nothing. So I'm just touching the audio amp with my finger. I'm just touching the input, we get a buzz. 
so we definitely know the audio IC is working. So let's see if we can trace a signal. So that was our 27 megahertz incoming. And we've changed it down to 10.7 megahertz. And we're going to trace it through the, the filter. So we seem to have a signal through the 10.7. Everything seems to be okay there. Just have a look what that center frequency is. Should be around 10.7. Yep. So it's not there. So let's inject 455 kilohertz with a tone. Now little did I know, I was so close to finding a fault here. So we did, we did, we'd read the signal there. We'd injected 10.7 megahertz there. And that was fine. And we'd seen 455 kilohertz there. And we'd gone along and I was getting a signal or an audio signal at these diodes. Or should we say when I injected audio into these diodes, I got an audio. But little did I know that I was right on top of the fault there. So when injecting the 455 kilohertz on the other end onto those diodes, I thought maybe it's the coil. Maybe it's the last IF coil. That was a problem because I could read it on the input and if it injected on the output, but I couldn't see anything on the output. So that side of the coil seems okay. So it's got three taps on it, that's fine. And sure enough, we have an open circuit coil. Could this be our problem? As you can see from Back in the video, I was so close to it. So let's have a look, see if we can spot what's wrong with the coil. So we've got it really close up on the phone. And you can see that one of the wires has corroded on the coil. Now I did actually put in a test coil out of another scrap radio and it did show me that it was this coil that was the problem but this screw slug was all the way at the bottom so i presume it was a slightly different value that's why i've gone for trying to repair this coil because then it will put it back as original as you can see we have a loose wire a little bit of green corrosion on it so it looks like it's corroded so let's see if we can repair this coil so I took it apart, found the actual end of the wire, and I've got some 0.1 millimeter wire. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little bit onto the end of it and solder it back onto the leg. And there we have it. So our coil should be working now. And sure enough, bingo. That was the problem. Well, an amazing fault. And there you go. We have a good signal. We got received audio. Beautiful. So that's all that was wrong with it. Just the coil. So my, my tracing was... 27 megahertz on the input into the first coil and then out of the first RF amp. And that goes into the 10 meg conversion, which will then be filtered by 10.7 megahertz. So you can see we have a signal. Spectrum analyzer is set to 27 megahertz. So once we go over the or should we say go through the 10 meg conversion we need to set our tiny SA for 10 megahertz so we'll do a center frequency 10.7 
you can see we have a 10.7 signal of sort just turn the span down a little bit so we can widen it up so that's around our 10.7 So moving through the 10.7 circuit, we go through the filter. We end up at CF2. And the 455 kilohertz first IF amplifier. So I'm trying to find where that is on the board. And there we go. So we have our 455 kilohertz. Now little did I know that when I was first doing this, I was so close to the, the fault. So a nice 455 kilohertz signal goes into the second IF amplifier and then out through L107 that then gets turned into the audible signal that's then fed into the audio amplifier. So, as always, I think this radio deserves a little bit of a clean. So we'll give it a little spray up. It'll clean with the brush. Check it's on frequency. Yep, all good. Nicely on frequency. Respectable power output, as to be expected. Nothing wrong with that at all. And it's actually got a 1307 output, which is rated at 25 watts. Very nice. So a little bit of Super Bowl, and as you can hear it's doing what it should be doing, which is receiving an AM signal. So there we have it, very nice condition, Midland 150M. Not sure what I'm going to do with this radio yet, but it's definitely interesting to work on. But don't leave the channel just yet because we have another radio to look at. Whilst we were doing AM radios, I thought I'd tag this one on the end because there wasn't much wrong with it. So here we have a realistic TRC-209 40 channel AM handheld. So I'm gonna have a look in this and check whether it's all working accordingly. So let's crack it open and have a look. Have a look at the back. So you can see TRC 209. No data manufacturer, but it's definitely old. There's no problem with that. So let's pop it open and have a look. So as with these early realistics, they are built very well. So we've got a service label in there, is it? 1980. Is that actually because it's been into a Tandy shop and been repaired? Who knows? So getting this back off was a bit problematic, but eventually we got it off. And everything looks okay apart from I'm not sure what that's about but it doesn't seem to be causing it any problem so we won't bother won't bother looking at it any further but back of the board looks okay so we'll switch it on have a look 
power sockets being a bit iffy. There we go. So the button at the side works for the channel. And we have transmission. And we have audio. Okay. I don't think there's much for us to do in there. Does our meter work? Yep. Our meter's working. So we'll give it a clean up. Plug it into an external aerial. Give it a check. It's on frequency. And four watts out of a handheld. That's respectable. Actually a genuine four watts as well. So it's high and low power. A little bit uneven, but it's fine. So there's our Midland 150 and our TRC 2009 side by side. Nice pair of AM radios there. I suppose back in the day these would have been excellent sets to use. Just seeing if we can get any Super Bowl on the on the handheld. And something seems to be coming through. So there we have it. A couple of AM sets. Nice and fully working. So anyway, hope you enjoyed this video on some vintage radios. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment, join the Facebook group, join Patreon, visit my website. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next episode.